Now one of the main things at the print farm with these printers, I have a wide variety of parts that I have to print. I'm printing anything from these little feet that go on the end of the table mount helping hand. And I also have the bases that I have to print for that. I have larger parts, like these parts for the lap diner. So there's a, a lot of filament and a lot of time involved in printing these. I have medium sized parts, like these tall parts that are used with the microscope. I've got these little cross-line laser adapters here that go with the helping hand and some of them in the larger flood assemblies for the helping hand. I have these small little parts that we print. These are the locking mechanisms of the helping hand here that lock and hold the adapters in place. So we have those little parts. We have actually the helping hand base unit itself to print. And then we have the electronics to install and wire and solder. And have these vice clamp accessories. And even the fan, this is one of the prototypes here that we're finalizing on. It's basically a flex arm fan that either blows cold air or exhaust air. And we'll be using this with this shroud in our soldering station where we do the soldering for the helping hand. And it will actually suck those fumes and smoke and stuff from the soldering process and keep that away from my grandson when he's doing soldering. And we'll also demonstrate how it can be used when we start doing some gluing and painting of some model airplanes and model boats and stuff that we're going to be making, demonstrating how the helping hand can help there. And this will be providing air to help in the drying process of the paint and the glues and so forth. So there are a lot of different parts that we're making here and printing and they have to go through different stages of testing because they have to fit and work together. Almost all of these parts, very few of them are stand alone. Almost all of them are part of a system. The helping hand is a system of accessories and adapters they come together to form different types of tools for different types of jobs and different people. To get all of these to work together, the parts have to be dimensionally accurate between printers. And it's true, you can print the same part on 10 different printers, even the same model, and get a little different result. I have some parts in these. The main helping hand uh, power head has slots that will hold three adapters at a time. Now, this, for example, is an adapter, as well as this vice clamp is an adapter. Now, the vice clamp has to be able to fit into those slots. It has to slide down into those slots, like so. And then, other adapters can go in also. If these little rails here do not fit inside the track correctly, then the part's not going to work. So every part has to be able to fit in there 
and to form the configuration that you're making. So that's one of the things that we have to deal with. These uh, laser adapters, for example, this hole has to be precisely the right size so that the laser, the crossline laser module, will slide in there and stay in place, not be too loose, and also the hole can't be too small where you can't get the laser in. So those have to be printed accurately. This uh, tall part here, uh, for example, the threaded holes here, the threads and the diameter of the hole and everything have to be precise to where this threaded end of these flex arm modules will be able to screw into those holes without any trouble. So they've got to be able to screw in there just like that and fit perfectly. These adapters here go into the extension arm. So this steel rod right here has to fit in this hole tight, but it can't be too tight and it can't be too loose. It has to be just right. On this side where the bolt goes through in the nut, that little hex outline has to be just right. And on most of the parts, we try to get that so that the nut will fit in tightly so that when you take the screw out, the nut won't fall loose. The nut stays in place. So that nut outline, that hex outline for the nut has to be the right size to where the nut's not too loose where it'll fall out, but it can't be too small where you can't get the nut in the, in the hole either. So there's a lot of precision in these parts, and you have to be careful and watch as you go along. I'll take you over here, for example. These are some of the, uh, the helping hand base units that are yet to be soldered there they have the components in them and they're ready to go to soldering and then these over here have all been soldered so we're taking these parts and take them over to this area over there where I was at and we put the cover plates on and the locking mechanism up on top on them over there before we move them on to the shipping area where they can be boxed and shipped out. These that are sitting out here are some where the slots or something don't fit exactly right. So these are being held more or less by my quality control because if I Okay, this one right here is an example. It was fitting a little bit tight there. Sometimes the deburring process is required to get some of these to fit exactly right. Okay, back to the table. You can see these right here I have all been assembled, tested, and are ready to go. These have been assembled, tested. So... I'll do a lot of the testing here once these parts that require assembly are assembled and then they can go on. Okay, for example, these uh, three port adapters they come right off the printers and don't require any additional work as far as uh, any assembly or any soldering or anything like that. And we have several parts that are like that. They're printed and they're ready to go. This tall part has another part that goes with it when it's used with the microscope. 
So until the next time, happy printing from New Tech Inventors.